Welcome to Chapter 15. Kurz darauf sitzt Simone im Wohnzimmer der alten Dame. We look for the verb, second position. You see it's the same in English, sit. And the ZT is a little bit special. Normally you would expect an ST, but we don't have a combination like this. Yeah, except for the, no, not even for them, the, the composer called Liszt. I think he writes himself like this, but that's not German. So that's a rare occasion. Uh, we also have tanzt, so it wouldn't be like this or this. Yeah, keep that in mind. So someone is sitting. Who is sitting? Here's a name. Let's take her. Simone is sitting. And where is she sitting? Im. You hopefully already see this. If you cut off one thing here, uh, strike, stroke, then it's in. So inside of something. And im is a short form of um, which words? You should know. In plus dim. So she's in the Wohnzimmer. We had this before. Wohn, wohnen, you might have come across, which means to live. And uh, Zimmer is, uh, there's a composer called Hans Zimmer who does movie music. And Hans Zimmer has a very tiny room when he does his music. So it's a room. Yeah, to live or living room. Der alten Dame, this is what we call the genitive, which you absolutely can ignore until B2, if not further than that. So it's off the, the off is not visible, it's uh, only visible for Germans and those who know the genitive. Alt, you also remember, O-L-D, same word, the old dame. Yeah, so Simone is sitting uh, in the living room of the old dame and you see here kurz darauf, yeah, I'm not sure whether we should take a look at that. Kurz, you remember, is the opposite of lang. So shortly. And which word only makes sense here? Shortly what? Shortly after. But darauf doesn't mean after. Yeah. So it's basically shortly and following das. Following that. Yeah. And auf here, upon. So upon the thing that had, has happened in the last chapter. So shortly after that occurrence, Simone is sitting in the living room. This is a simple one. Ihr Name ist Kaiser. So the ear here in the beginning, it's very, it's followed by a noun. So it's an article and you just jumble around the H, the I, the R and you have the English word. Her name is Kaiser. And what does she do? Sie wohnt schon ihr ganzes Leben hier. Wohnt, you have this again. Yeah, we just said that. Wohnzimmer. Sie, you know by now. It's almost the same in English. Yeah, just one letter up. H-I, uh, one letter down. Instead of the I, we take an H. She lives. Ihr, we jumble. Ganz, you might also remember. Whole. And Leben, you remember that as well. L, something V. And here. She lives here her whole life. And Sean, you might remember as well. If not, here's another repetition. Already. And the way to remember already, how can we do this? Sean. Well, it's often confused with the word that has the umlaut. I, let me not write this here. Um, schon immer, yeah, how to say, schon already, 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 schon. I have actually no idea how to remember this, but maybe by just pondering over it and seeing me fail to find a connection, that is already enough for you. Schon, schon. Well, the sun already shone. How about that? Yeah, today. All you have to remember is that already and shown are connected. Auch Stefan ist dazugekommen. You see here the GE is in the middle. That happens if you have separable verbs, which is this one. Yeah, dazukommen. Actually, that's uh, written together. Um, so, but it's separable. So if you wrote this in the present tense, ich komme 
Katsu, it would look like this. But in the past, due to the ist, you basically replace the comma, bin, dazu, put the comma at the end, and then of course adapt it to the past tense. Yeah? So, and that's why it's together again. So, Stefan is dazu gekommen. So, what does it mean, dazu kommen? Well, it means something with coming. So, Stefan came. That's all you need to know. And it's the past tense, which you see in the use of ist or haben and the ge here. So, he came. And dazu, da, like in darauf before, is kind of... No, in this case, it means there. Yeah? So, there plus zu, which is to. There to. He came there too. To that place. A simple one. Es gibt. Do you remember this? Yeah? Don't translate it. It gives. It is there are or there is. Kaffee is clear, Kuchen, we had this Gucci Gucci, yeah? We had the cook that cooks the cake, so Kuchen is actually a cake. And don't mistake it for kitchen, which looks similar, but uh, very rarely ends in an en and has an umlaut. I don't write this here, I don't want to give you similar information too much at the same time. Da sagt Stefan nie nein. That's a nice combination here, nie nein. So and again the da, it's lots of da here. And again it means there, in this case, sagen, it's a classical standard verb, uh, looks the same. You just give the G a little haircut and you get the say. So Stefan says nie, remember? My nie never hurts. So Stefan never says no in such a case. Yeah? Da sagt Stefan nie sein, nie nein. Da sage ich nie nein. So da means in such a situation in this case. Er ist gerade sein drittes Stück. So what is very likely we're talking about him, er. So that's he. And what is he doing? He, he, it's not that he is, he's actually Essen. Yeah, that's the irregular form of Essen. And that goes Ich esse, du isst. And he, she, it, isst looks the same. This is what many irregular verbs, um, or some irregular verbs, have in common that uh, these two forms might look similar. Yeah, so he eats gerade, you remember that, this very moment. Sein oder nicht sein, his. And dritt contains, contains the English word th, third. If you look at this, the D turns into a TH and then you jumble the R and the I and the T turns into a D. So his third Frühstück piece. And he's doing that während sich Simone mit Frau Kaiser unterhält. Während, während, um, well, während. Maybe it looks a bit like war in here, although remember there was a war, so war actually means was, but wären means to last. Yeah? And während, while it lasts, so short form while, sich. I don't bother with anymore. It belongs to which word? Hopefully you guessed that. So while Simone with Frau Miss K unterhält. Underholds. So to uh, unterhalten, we had this before. Entertain. It's a bit more based on Latin or French. Or well, let's say more Latin and the French actually have this. Entre, entre, and tene, to hold, so um, very likely Latin in origin. So when, while Simone entertains herself with Miss Kaiser, and that doesn't mean she's doing some weird stuff with her, she's actually having a conversation with her. Sich unterhalten means to have a chat, because it's entertaining. <laughs> 